Well, because here we go. We're going over it anyway. Yeah, right. All right. All right, so what we have here is a problem. And what they want us to do is they want us to find all of the zeros of this function. So, this is on page 160, this is number 21. All right? So, when we're trying to find the zeros, first thing that we want to do is you always want to look and see if you can factor it, right? And if I look at this, when I see four terms, I automatically think factor by grouping. However, any doesn't matter any way that I group these. It doesn't matter how I group these. Seriously, I'm explaining how for you to do the problem. You probably want to be paying attention to this. This how to do question number twenty-one. So when I'm showing you guys how to do this problem, first thing you want to do is factor by grouping. You can't factor this by grouping. There's no way you can group these to factor out any number. So factoring is not going to work. Um, I can't complete the square because it's not a trinomial. I can't use quadratic formula because it's not a trinomial. Um, and so I'm kind of stuck right now. So one thing you could do is we got always graph it. But right now, I don't have a graphing calculator. So I'm going to show you what you want to do or what way to solve this without a graphing utility. So the next thing that we learned is um, there's a rational zero test. And what the rational zero test tells us is all of my rational zeros, remember all my rational numbers, 3, 5, negative 7, 1 half, 3 fifths, any number that can be put in as a fraction, all the possible rational zeros, so we write possible rational zeros, are what we label as p over q, where my coefficient is q and my constant term is p. So this is the factors of P and Q. So I look at what are all the factors of my P? Well, that's going to be plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 1. Right? Then I look over here and I say, all right, what's my Q? Well, thankfully, Q is pretty good because it's just going to be plus or minus 1. So therefore, all the possible rational zeros, remember, we can still have imaginary. We can still have irrational. But just the possible rationals are going to be uh, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 1. All right? So these are all my possible numbers. Now, I don't know if any of these, none of these could work, or some of these could work. All right? So what I'm going to do is I need to test them out. So the easiest way that we can do the test these out is we can use synthetic division or evaluation. If we do synthetic division and we get a remainder of zero, we know it's a factor, right? If we do, um, if we do a evaluation and we get zero at our end, we know it's also a factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the easiest ones. I'm going to do one as a zero, and I'm going to do negative one as a zero. I don't have a graph utility. It'd be a lot easier if I graph this and I could see which one of those probably worked or we're closer, but I don't have a graph utility. So I'm going to use synthetic division. So I use my coefficients of each term. So one is for z, um, a negative one is for z cubed, a negative two is for z, no, I'm sorry, I don't have a square term, do I? So that's zero. Then I have negative two, negative four. This one's the same thing. One, negative one, zero, negative two, negative four. Again, the reason why I had zero is because there's no square term. So if you don't have a square term, the coefficient is zero. So now I'm just going to do synthetic division. Just drop down my one. One times one is one. Zero. One times zero is zero. Zero. One times zero is going to be zero. That becomes a negative two. One times negative two is a negative two, which becomes a negative six. So therefore, one is not a zero. All right? So I can look at this and I say, all right, Positive 1 is not a 0. Let's go and see if negative 1 is a 0. Drop down my 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 times 2 is positive 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. Negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is a 0. Ding, 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 ding. We got one, right? Awesome. We got it. So now we know that negative 1 is a 0, right? Mm -hmm. So we got one factor. Now, 
So I'll just write 0, negative 1. That means x minus uh, x plus 1 is my factor. All right. Now the cool thing about using synthetic division is now we have a remaining polynomial, which is, let's see, it's going to be x cubed, x squared, x, and that's my constant. So my factor, or my remaining polynomial now, is x cubed minus. Why did you move from z to x's? There's absolutely no reason why I moved from z to x's. Okay. It's just being very uh, used to always using um, x's. So is my it the same thing? It is the exact same thing, but the problem is talking with z's. So we obviously you should be using z's, right? Thank you. So therefore, I have z cubed minus two z squared plus z plus two z minus four. All right. So now we need some way how to factor this, right? Here's our main factor. So our factor, our one factor, was x uh, plus one. And our other factor is this. If you were to multiply these two, why am I getting the X? God, if I were to multiply these two factors, I would get my original polynomial. Okay? So I need to see can I factor this out more? If I knew what another factor was, I would use synthetic division again. I don't know what another factor is. I could try these out again and see if they worked, but I notice I can actually factor this by grouping. I have four terms, and what I can do is I can group my first two terms, and I can group my last two terms. I have a double plus sign. And what happens here is, oh when I, now I can group these, I can pull out a z squared here, and I'll be left with a z minus two. And here I can pull out a two, and I'm left with a a z minus 2. Then I look at my polynomial and I notice again they both share a z minus 2. So now I can factor out a z minus 2. And when I factor out a z minus 2, I'm left with a z squared plus 2. So therefore, now, ladies and gentlemen, my three factors are z plus 1, z minus 2, and z squared plus 2. So I have three factors. But the original problem tells me to find what the zeros are. Well, I know the one zero was negative 1, right? So to find my other zeros, let's get rid of my synthetic division. To find my other zeros, i got to set these equal to 0. So I say z minus 2 equals 0, and z squared plus 2 equals 0. Add 2, z equals 2, and then here I got to subtract 2, z squared equals negative 2, square root, z equals square root of 2i. So this is a imaginary root, right? Yeah. It's there though, it's allowed, it's possible, it's an imaginary root. 2 was our other, our possible, so therefore our final zeros and I'm sorry, that's plus or minus, right? Because a lot of you got those wrong. Yes? I got that too, but then I looked in the back and it's saying that um, only well, negative 1 and 2 are zeros. We're going to get through. Um, I looked at there. So when I look at this, um, and what they're what they have actually in the book is they're just asking for what the real zeros were. That's why. It didn't ask for what the imaginary were. So therefore, my final zeros are. Um, negative 1 and 2, all right? And plus or minus square root of 2i. But yes, you're correct. In the book, they just said, what were the real zeros? So therefore, you wouldn't include your 2i. But just you guys need to understand that this still does exist. This still is another factor. And is if I did include my plus or minus plus these two factors, I'm, I'm allowed four zeros, right? So it would work, OK? So that is how. You find the zeros using the rational zero test. Whew, it's a lot, isn't it? Yeah.